Good morning. We're so glad that you guys are all here this morning. Jen Miller, everyone. <laughs> Beautiful as usual. Thank you so much. If you are new with us today, we have some Connect cards in the uh, chairs in front of you, and we'd love to have you guys fill those out and then bring them to Cup of Joy, and we have a little treat for you. Yes, yeah, Steve, could you hold up that Connect card so everyone knows what it looks like? Thank you, Steve. That's the Connect card. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you guys are with us today. As you can see, we are prepping for um, Resurrection Sunday. We got a little prepping going on. Um, pastor was going to come out of the, the grave, but <laughs> there's no hole. It's just, it's just there. So. So with the thought of Resurrection Sunday, we have a lot of activities coming down the pike for our church. And um, the first thing that I want to make you aware of is that as you look around, you're probably thinking, wow, there's a lot of kids in here right now. What's going on? Well, today is Family Sunday. And so we have all of our kids joining us today and all of the people that are... Um, Leaders within our children's ministry are here today, too. Hey, those of you that are leaders within our children's ministry, stand up for a second. We just want to acknowledge that. Stand up a little bit. Come on. Give some claps. Now, as you look around, not a lot of people stood up. So that being said, we need more people in the children's ministry. So um, if your heart... Is for the children. Yes, all volunteers. Yep. So uh, there's Andrea. One more. One more. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jolyn does it on Wednesdays. <laughs> Call you out for you. There we go. All right. Anyway, let's get back on task, Kildy. We got this. All right. So today we have something really fun going on besides our besides our family service. We are also doing a baptism at the Eau Claire campus. You're like, it's a little cold outside. Don't worry, we're doing it inside. We've got a jacuzzi. So now you're thinking, I'd like to be baptized. Well, if you would like to, talk to Adam after the service. April 15th is Good Friday, and guess when that is? Friday. This coming Friday. Okay. So we are doing a crosswalk. We're doing two crosswalks. One is for those that are um, very brave. <laughs> <laughs> very brave individuals. It doesn't matter gender. You're just brave regardless. We are going to be walking from our church to Friendship Church in Mondovi because we have a good friendship with Friendship Church. And uh, we are going to be celebrating Good Friday with them. We're going to be doing our Good Friday service at their church, at their gorgeous church facilities that they allowed us to use for several years while we were in the process of making this beautiful church. Several years, like what, two, one and a half? It felt like, so. it felt like 10 <laughs> um, for those of us that were going there. Um, and so with that, we, we want to continue that relationship that we have with them. Um, the other thing is you're like, whoa, that's like nine miles, and I cannot carry a wooden cross for nine miles unless it's in my pocket. Um, these are bigger crosses than that, so if you're like, I can't do that, but you still want to do a crosswalk, we're going to do one in Mondovi as well that's going to be around the neighborhood. So we can still participate in that regardless of your abilities. Um, so if you're leaving from the church, 3 o'clock, meet here at the church. If you want to do the shorter one in Mondovi, that starts at 5.30 at Friendship Church. Um, and then the service is going to be at 6.30. If you're like, I'm working, I can't do either crosswalk, come at 6.30 and you can still be part of the service. We'd love to have you there as well. And that's going to be at Friendship Church at 6.30 this Friday. Okay. Another thing that's going on on Friday, maybe you're like, I can't, my knees, my hips, they're not what they used to be, but I still want to celebrate and get my heart in the right spot. At our Eau Claire campus and at our Chippewa campus, they are doing the Stations of the Cross, which is 
I've been to it several times. It is an amazing event to go to. So if that might be something that you could do instead if you're not able to do the crosswalk or and, do both, why not? It's so good, it's totally worth it. Then on April 17th, we have our Resurrection Sunday here at the church. We are having service at, Wanda? 9 a.m. Because Wanda is making us some brunch afterwards. And so we're going to have um, an early morning service. Typically, we meet at 10. We're going to meet at 9. And then right afterwards, we're going to have brunch so that you guys can all get home and hang out with your families after that. With full bellies. That's right. We have a women's conference that is coming up on April 23rd, and that is at the Eau Claire campus. And, um, and there are tickets available in the lobby today. If you are interested, we would love to have you guys attend that as well. Okay, last announcement for me, and that is on April 22nd to 23rd, we have a mom's group that is doing um, a rummage sale and with food and a bake sale, and it can be a craft sale too. And so you can um, decide to like host a table if you wanna do that. Um, Aubrey is the one that you would want to talk to. Um, the other thing too is that you can start bringing items for the garage sale if you're like, I don't, I don't want to host, but I've got some really great things that might sell. You can bring some items to the garage sale and donate them to this mom's group. Um, and then we will start collecting those items after Easter. So we kind of want to keep the, the church all pretty before Easter. But after Easter, we're like, let's do a garage sale. It's spring cleaning anyway, right? So pull out all those things from spring cleaning, and we will work with you to get them sold and donated to our mom's group. Carlin? You have some announcements? Carlin is our children's minister, everyone. So she is with us today. She's got some announcements for us. I got to get this close. Can you hear me? OK. I, this is going to be short and sweet in a way, but I'll first have to say this. <laughs> You're right, you doubt it, and you're probably right. Uh, God connects us, and it just keeps, he keeps surprising me and amazing me. One of my first announcements is BGMC. And after talking with Nathan, who we're going to be hearing from in just a few minutes, him and Tressa, um, that's what they're going to really be telling, talking about on a lot of things, uh, besides everything else they got going. So I just wanted to mention it and let you know you're going to be hearing more from your kids, your grandkids, or anybody's kids. Once uh, we get our barrels out and everything, you'll be seeing them too in their presentation. So be thinking. I will say this too. The money we raised in March for BGMC, all three harvest times came together, put them together, and they went to the Ukraine Convoy of Hope. And this Convoy of Hope is fantastic. That's who we hooked up with in Puerto Rico when we went there for a missions trip. And I saw the trucks in Florida for the conference. It's, like I said, God's connecting. He keeps doing what he wants us to do. So keep that in mind. I have one other thing. I've got my paper. <laughs> You're going to be hearing more of this, too, because, but kids' summer camp, we're going to be starting doing fundraisers, um, anyone wanting to sco uh, sponsor a kid or spon help sponsor, we'll be glad and happy to take your donations. Uh, right. We'll take your money, yes, right, we will. Um, August 8th through 12th is for my kids, three through fifth grade. And so, speaking for them, we will be, like I said, we're going to do a fundraiser and everything, but we will take your money if you, don't, if you want to donate. Just whatever God puts on your heart, and I know he covers us. So uh, be thinking about that, and you will probably not be able to forget it because they're going to be putting posters up and signs up, and we're going to be mentioning it a lot, okay? But thank you, and it is short, isn't it? Shorter.
Good morning, church family. It's good to see everybody this morning. God's house is full. Today's uh, reading is from uh, uh, Luke uh, 19, uh, verses 28 through uh, uh, 43. This is Jesus' Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. After he had said these things, he was going on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he approached Bethpage and Bethany near the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you. There as you enter, you will find a colt tied on which no one has yet ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? You shall say, The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent away <clears throat> and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord has need of it. They brought it to Jesus, and they threw their coats on the colt and put Jesus on it. As he was going, they were spreading their coats on, on, on the road. As soon as he was approaching near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the miracles which they had seen, shouting, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But Jesus answered, I tell you, if these become silent, the stones will cry out. When he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known in this day even the things which make for peace, but now they have been hidden from your eyes, for the days will come upon you when your enemies will throw up a barricade against you and surround you and hem you in and on every side, and they will level you up to the ground and your children within you, and they will not leave you in one stone upon another because you did not recognize the name, the time of your visitation. Folks, this is the time as we, we praise and receive our King Jesus, <laughs> that we open the doors to our heart and, and cry out his name for everything that he does for us, for his, for his death on the cross, for his strengthening in our time of need, for our salvation. He's calling on us daily. Let us, let us praise, praise our King this morning. Heavenly Father, open the doors, the doors to our heart, Lord Jesus, to receive you, all of you. We want you, Father. Your word, it cannot be shut up. It's in our hearts, and while we still have breath, we will join in, in all of your creation, Father, and shout praises to your name, for you are here. You are our King. We love you. Amen. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the ten
the word, one we have seen and we have heard, the only begotten of the Father. You are my one and only Son, not my will but yours be done. All we can do is stand wonder and sing. Beauty, beauty, beautiful, glory, glory, glorious, you are, you are. Beauty, beauty, beautiful, glory, glory, glorious, you are. How do you know we're done worshiping? Um, I, I actually want just to take a minute or two and then just to sing the chorus again, but a minute or two for us to just pray. Um, I know a lot of your lives, and I know there's a lot of needs, and I know there's a lot of hurt, and there's people in the hospital, and there's issues, and um, deaths, and the family, and there's things. There's real things. And so I think one of the things 
uh, that we can, that we do in this moment is we have come, we have come to God's house, God's people and God's place. We, we, have, we, have, we have done what we can. We had offered him a, our praise. He has come into this place. Um, he is always here, but he has come. And then we just ask, and we have a time where we can just ask, God, these are my petitions, and these are my needs, and these are the things weighing on my heart with full assurance that he hears and full assurance that, uh, that, he, will, that he will move. Um, and, and I just like the transition of songs where, where we have this assurance that he is our good, good father. He is not some God out in heaven that, like the deists believe, who doesn't care what is going on. He is your father, he is your God, and he loves you. And we sing that, that we are now free to enter into his presence, into the holy place, because, he's, because of the blood of Jesus Christ, that we are free in his presence, in the presence of our father, in his presence is glorious. And so our hearts are now uh, full of faith. Uh, that we are not asking in desperation, but we're asking in faith and an expectancy, which is what Hosanna means. It means save now with an expectancy uh, that, that God would move. And so just for the next minute or two, I just encourage you, uh, wherever you're at, to pray for whatever those needs are and believe that God will come uh, come and move on those, those situations. Father God, you are glorious. Father, we worship you this morning. We give you praise. Father, we thank you that you have redeemed us and saved us. We thank you that you are a God who loves us and who hears our prayers. And Father, we trust you. We trust you with that. We look forward to seeing the abundantly more than we can ask or imagine, Father. Excited to see what you will do. Uh, in the midst of these prayers. Heavenly Father, God, I pray that you have received praise this morning, that in a small way, on this anniversary of Palm Sunday, Father, that we have received our King, that we have received our King this morning, that you have um, heard and been delighted in our, our praise and worship. Father, we just give you the service. We give you our lives and our hearts. Father, I pray that you would speak 
uh, clearly through our, our missionaries this morning, God, that, that the, the fire and the passion and the call that you put on their hearts would be on our hearts as well, for we are called likewise to advance your kingdom. And so we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, that was amazing. Uh, my name's Adam. Thank you for coming. I'm the pastor here. Uh, welcome to you online. I do have, I just want to say two little quick things about our announcements. The first is, just because you may or may not be getting baptized this evening does not exempt the invitation uh, that you would go to the baptism service at 6 o'clock at the Eau Claire campus. Uh, we have, I believe, eight people uh, from this church who are getting baptized, uh, which, yes, signifying... Yeah, that's awesome. Praise God. Yeah, signifying that they're, they're new creations, new in Christ, and they want to declare that. And so as many of us who are able to go there and to celebrate with them and to pray over them uh, would just be amazing. Awesome. I felt like I had one more thing to say before I invited you up. I don't remember what it was. Well, it must not have been important. All right, so without further ado, we do have uh, some missionaries with us this morning, Nathan and Trissa. Yes, I did it right, right? Yes. And they are wonderful, and so here you go. Well, thank you. All right, there it is. Thank you, Pastor. Man, you guys have been so welcoming. We feel so at home here. We were spoiled at Michael and Andrea's house last night, and we got to have them like, feast, like seriously. Way better than any restaurant ever. It was amazing. Thank you. And you remembered my name, so I have an unusual name. I'm Trissa. But I answered to a lot of things because people don't remember Trissa. So, um, can we, do we have slides? I, I didn't ask about that. Okay, so this is my family. You will hear them, I'm sure. So we have three kids. We have Josiah, who's eight. He's the one falling over. We have Ruth, who's making the goofy face. And we have Gabriel, who's now three. And uh, so they're all a joy and a delight. I'm Trissa. My husband's name is, like, easy to remember. It's Nathan. So you guys, we um, are so excited to share with you, and we just want to take a minute, and we're going to pray. So if you bow your heads, Holy Spirit, we ask you to come. We ask you to be here. We ask you to give each person here, young and old, big and little, a word from you today. We ask that you get us out of the way, that we hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Do I have any children in here? If you're a child that you're 10 and under, can you stand up? We see if there's a few. All right, you want to get the wiggles out? Yeah, okay. Because I understand that children sometimes get wiggles. And you know what, you guys, if you want to be able to see better, are you in the back? Can you see okay? Can you see me? If you can't see very good, there's a whole row up here. You guys can come and join me because you're going to want to see what we've got today. And we're going to start with a little exercise. Are you ready? Can you guys see us in the way back? Can you see me? Can you see how many fingers do you see? Kids can come on up. You guys, we're going to have to hear, like, participation here. How many fingers do you see? Five. Okay, I get five. If you're in the way back, how many fingers do you see? I, I, I'm waiting. I can't hear you. How many fingers do you see? Three, four. We'll try over here. Maybe they have better eyes. We'll try over here. How many fingers do you see? All right. All right. We'll try again over here. How many fingers do you see? All right. Well, here's the deal, guys. I asked you, how many fingers do you see? I did not ask you how many fingers am I holding up. So how many, of, yeah, I have 10 fingers. How many times do we overlook the things right in front of us? You know, sometimes it's like that with kids ministry. Did you know that? Sometimes people forget oh, the kids, they're right in front of us. And we forget what an incredible ministry we have to children. So Nathan and I have spent a long time with children's ministry. We love children's ministry. We love Africa. And we're going to share a little bit more. Can you go to the next slide? Please. <laughs> so this is Ivory Coast. 
in Africa, Ivory Coast, you speak French. Nathan and I are learning French. Uh, our journey started actually a little bit over in Togo. If you get our prayer card, you'll see a map of where Togo is. Did you guys know where Togo is? I didn't either. So I had to like look it up when God called us. <laughs> All right, next slide. All right. Do you guys see anybody in that picture that looks familiar? Me! You recognize me. This is a long time ago, like 15 years ago. So, and a kangaroo, guess where I was? I was not in Africa. Australia! We got kangaroos in Australia. So when I, like a long time ago, I was trying to ask God, what am I supposed to do? And you know what God did? He, he sent me to Australia. And you know what happened in Australia? I was like a really scared, didn't like to talk to people ever. I didn't even like to call, call people on the phone. I was so scared. And here I am in a microphone. What? So, so God sent me to Australia. I, I was the oldest, and I was like, I'm feeling left out. My, my younger sisters are getting married and having children. What about me? And he sent me to Australia. And while I was in Australia, because I thought I was going to go see kangaroos and koala and all the cool stuff in Australia, but you know what? I wasn't sure about things like going places where there's like dirt roads everywhere and there's no good toilets and there's no good running water. I wasn't sure about all that. But while I was in Australia, God changed my heart. And he, you know what he did? He helped me see who I was, who he made me to be. And he loved on me so much that it changed me because as I got to see God pour his love in me, I realized, oh, everybody needs that love. Whether they have dirt roads, whether, they have, whether they're considered poor and needy, whether they have lots of nice clothes or they have rags, that's the kind of love that God poured in me, and that's the kind of heart he gave me for everybody around me. So then it was easier to say, yes, I'm going to go to Africa. I'm going to go to wherever you send me, God. I'll go to Asia. That's, that's the change that God does in our hearts as we love him and as we learn about his love for us. Next slide. So here's a picture when I was in Uganda. Can you guys say Uganda? Uganda. Good job. So that's in Africa. That was my first time to go to Africa, and I loved it so much I had to go back. And so I loved Africa. I love Uganda. And then what is so cool, so God gave me a heart for missions. The same time, like the year before, you guys say dun 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 on the same side of the world. Next slide. It's Papua New Guinea. Hey! Morning. I'm Nathan. It's awesome to be here. Thank you, pastors and leaders, for having us out. So first, I want to talk about Palm Sunday before I get into Papua New Guinea. I would be missing it if we didn't talk about Palm Sunday right quick, which is today. So who can tell me what, who can show me their palms? Raise your hands and show me your palms. Is this what Palm Sunday is about? No. Put your two palms together and give yourselves a clap for being here this morning. Especially if you're a kid or a kid at heart. It's awesome to see so many people here, and I'm praying this church is overflowing next Sunday for Easter. And if we had time, I would get a kid to come ride another kid as a donkey. Jesus, for Palm we don't have time, I'm sorry. Palm Sunday, we had uh, Jesus ride a donkey and be worshipped as our king. And that he is still our king. Jesus is still on that throne, and he still wants to have a special relationship with us. Jesus will be your king if you let him. So, Papua New Guinea, I realized how much Jesus was my king. I did a short-term missions trip there as a writer and felt, absolutely fell in love with missions work. I was going to school at Eau Claire at the time, got my bachelor's degree. I have a college friend that came in this morning to see us. Thank you. And absolutely fell in love with missions work at Papua New Guinea. Next slide, please. And then I traveled to Africa and fell in love with kids ministry and found out that Jesus loves these kids just as much as he loves the kids here as he loves adults everywhere. It doesn't matter how old, how young, how much money we have, what country we live in. It doesn't matter anything except that we can have Jesus as our Lord and Master and Savior, because he died on that cross and came back to life again. And so 
we're all princes and princesses in God's kingdom if we accept Jesus and his sacrifice for us. Next slide, please. These are the countries we've been to in Africa. Trissa was at the one in the middle, Uganda, and then I've been in all the rest. Spent a year in South Africa, falling in love with kids ministry, did a short-term missions trip to Cameroon, and did, ran an orphanage there, and then Egypt, while I was down in Texas, going to seminary, a church flew me in for a vacation Bible school. So we spent about five years as kids pastors in Texas, had our oldest, Josiah, then we traveled to Green Bay, Wisconsin, spent about three years there, and had our second child, Ruth, and then went to Tennessee, and we had our youngest child, Gabriel. And now we've transitioned into missions, so we're done having kids. <laughs> Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So this is Brent and Shelly Teague. They have a base camp in Africa, and they're also the leaders for the West Africa region. And Shelly Teague there, her heart is for children's ministry to explode in Africa. So here's the deal. You guys are so smart. Can you say 400? 4,000. <laughs> so smart. 400. Now say million. 400 million children in Africa. Is that a lot? Is that like, whoa? Could you imagine going somewhere where every other person is a kid? Would that be like so different? You guys wouldn't take up the front row. You'd take up half the church. What? So that's what's going on in Africa. There's 400 million children. And like I said, sometimes... We forget what's right in front of us. We don't see, like I was doing with the fingers, we don't see what's right in front of us. And sometimes there's churches and there's pastors that are overlooking the children's ministry. So the National Church in Africa is asking for help. When Nathan and I started this journey, there was eight children's missionaries with the Assemblies of God. Families that were focused on children's ministries. And that's not saying that there's not anybody not helping the children, because obviously if there's half of Africa's children, then there is a lot of help. But actually focused on children's ministry, there was eight when we started. So Africa's children has been praying for 25 new families to start and be a part of that by 2025. What year is it? 2022. So there's three more years for this prayer, right? So I think there's like 14 new families and individuals for children's ministries. Next slide. So here's the, the camp in, in Ivory Coast, Dawa. We have a friend on the end there with the checkered dress. Her name's Marilyn. She got to go. When we were starting, we were going to Togo. Say Togo. And now we were transitioning to Ivory Coast. And Marilyn was one of our teammates for Togo. So she's there. There's three I do it right? Three, that's four people, okay. Three other ladies that were going to Togo with us that are now in Ivory Coast. Next slide. And they are getting to do this work. So here, Jesus said, let the little children come to me and don't hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. This is a powerful verse, you guys. How can we, I mean, sometimes I think we hinder children by just not even understanding the value of children's ministry not understanding the importance of children's ministries. Next slide. So here's a picture of some of these kids that are getting some help in, in Africa. Next slide. Is the Phil Malcolm video ready? So our mentor that invited us to Togo has this really cool BGMC video. You guys know about BGMC? Yeah. So this is where you get to collect money and you send it off all around the world to missionaries. And Phil Malcolm's going to share with you some of the things that happened with BGMC money. I'd like to go through what BGMC means. Oh, yeah. BGMC. Who knows what this means? I can't hear you. Boys, because it's a B. You will know your stuff. Okay. Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge. <laughs> but it's where boys and girls get to collect funds and send it to missionaries, right? You guys know what this is called? Buddy barrel? Who has a buddy barrel? Raise your hand. You got a buddy barrel. 
nope, not yet. Oh, I think you're, I think your leader's can, you've got one, we got two. All right, I think we're gonna be getting more. And you guys get to fill it up and you get to see what's going on in BGMC. Video. Yeah, we need to clap. Here it comes. Hello, greetings from Phil Malcolm, your missionary of the children of West Africa. I'm here today to take a few moments just to tell you about why BGMC is so important for us as missionaries. You see, BGMC has done incredible things throughout our career as missionaries. I don't have time to tell you right now everything that BGMC has helped us with, but let me talk to you about the big three. Three things that we hear time and again wherever we go across the continent of Africa. We hear it from children's workers, from children's leaders, from missionaries, even from national church leaders. They always ask us about these three projects. Number one, would you help us to train our teachers? Number two, would you help provide curriculum, lessons for our Sunday school classes? And number three, would you help provide space for our children? We have no place for our kids to meet. BGMC has helped to meet all three of those needs and helped us to go far beyond what we could do on our own. Let me give you some examples. First of all, Sunday school shelters. This project has been a project that BGMC has raised thousands of dollars for. We've been able to put up dozens of Sunday school shelters that we couldn't have done on our own because people just like you, churches just like yours, gave to a BGMC project to put up a Sunday school shelter for a church that had no money to build a space for their kids. And when that happens, the children come. We've heard reports of attendance in children's church doubling and even tripling. That's the power of BGMC, helping us to go farther and to do more. Number two, you've helped us with curriculum, creative lessons. One of the most impactful things we can do is to help a teacher learn how to become a better teacher. And the easiest way to do that is to give them lessons that show them creative ideas, storytelling, object lessons, all those things built right into the curriculum very simple ideas using materials they can find on hand, but are, that are done creatively that make lessons come alive for kids. BGMC has helped us. We have created the lessons, but BGMC helped to translate those into many different languages and pay, pay for printing so they could be distributed on a wide basis. Once again, things that we couldn't have done on our own. And finally, there's teacher training. Perhaps the most important thing we could possibly do. A well-trained teacher is able to make the Bible come alive for kids. They're able to reach out to kids, lead them to Christ, and then disciple them. We have been able to hold dozens of training seminars all across the continent of Africa with thousands of teachers in attendance. This has been transformative for their ministries. In fact, even before they leave that place where we're holding the seminar, they tell us, you have helped us to find new excitement and joy about doing children's ministry and we are so excited to put into practice these creative methods that you've taught us. And then after they go home, we hear the testimonies of how these creative seminars, how to teach children creatively, how to use the resources you have to make the Bible come alive, have been transforming their children's ministries. Children are now the first ones at the door telling mom and dad, hurry up, we don't want to miss church because they're so excited to come to these classes where teachers have been well trained. But friends, again, it only happens because you help us. BGMC has helped to raise funds to sponsor these events and to sponsor teachers who couldn't come on their own to be there and to learn how to become better teachers and be able to disciple children all across the continent of Africa. I could go on. BGMC has helped us with all kinds of outreach projects and compassion ministries, schools and feeding programs. The list goes on and on. But what I want you to understand is this. Your BGMC giving is not just something to help kids learn about countries on the other side of the world. It impacts what we do. It helps to make us more effective and to reach out farther and more effectively to change lives, the lives of the children of Africa. Thank you very much for what you're doing for BGMC. God bless you. Okay, so here, here's a story. Anybody like stories? I love stories, and I love telling stories. So imagine you're in Africa. Yeah. Do you have a monkey? Yeah. There's a monkey in the tree, and you're a kid. What do you want to watch, your teacher or the monkey in the tree? Yeah. Monkey, yeah. Teacher. Adults too, maybe. You are so smart. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you're, you're brilliant. <laughs> so, so there is 75. You guys help me say 75. 75. Children. A teacher. Her name's Agnes. Say Agnes. She's the teacher. She has 75 children, and they're looking at her, and she's their teacher. What do you do? What, what do you think she did? <laughs> Looked at the monkey. <laughs> she, she asked for help. She's like, I have all these children. They are not inside. They're all over the place. How can I help them learn about Jesus? So she asked for help. So Phil and Robin go to her church. They help them build a did you guys hear the word? Sunday school shelter just for the kids. Could you imagine going to a place where you had a special place that's for you? Yeah. You don't have to be distracted by monkeys or the sun or the rain or all the things, right? <laughs> so 75 kids come. They love it. So then it turns into 200 children. 200 right now, yeah. So 200 children, and she's still the teacher, and she says, what do you do? What do I do? How do I keep kids wanting to come back? I need help. Yay. So say help. No. So she asked for help. So Phil and Robin came back, and they did. Did you guys catch the other thing they're asking for? Teacher training so she could be a better teacher. You would want to listen to her if she's a really good teacher, right? So, so she went through this training. There's like 75 teachers that come. They come and they le learn how to make the Bible more exciting. They learn how to do object lessons and have visuals and different things that they can do, like puppets and stories and different things that make it more exciting. So there's these 200 children that are coming and they're loving it. Well, she goes back to the church and the parents say, Madam, what are you doing? Say, uh-oh. The parents are asking her, Madam, what are you doing with our children? Before, they didn't want to come to church, but now they're making us come. What are you doing? Before, we would ask them, what are you learning? You know what they said? Je ne sais pas. That's French. I don't know. Je ne sais pas. But now they know exactly what they're learning. What are you doing? So Agnes invites the parents, and she says, you guys come. You come to our Sunday school shelter. And the parents come, and you know what happened? They loved it. They didn't want to leave. She had to shoo them back to the adult service. Can you imagine? Go back to the adults. So you see, a little bit of training can make a humongous difference. All right, Sunday school shelters. Say Sunday school shelters. Sunday school shelters. That's one of the big needs. Teacher drama uh, training, not drama. <laughs> Teacher dr training. What's the third one? Who was listening really good? Curriculum. curriculum. You got it. So they need special curriculum that's created for their culture that has supplies they can find and things that they can use. So those are the three big needs. And you guys, if you remember and you come back to the table, we have a treat for you at our table. So remember, teacher training, Sunday school shelters, and curriculum. Yeah, do you like chocolate? You're going to have to stay tuned. Okay. Here's one of the things that she might have learned, and I need a couple kids to come help me. Who wants to volunteer and see what's in my mystery bag? Who here is afraid... Kids, who's afraid of snakes? Anybody? Does anybody have a snake in this bag? We don't know. Anybody want to see what's in the bag? Yeah. What's in the bag? Okay. Do you want to come help me? Are you afraid of snakes? Good, because there's no snake in this bag. Come here and help me, please. And I need one more person who's feeling very, very brave. Okay. Isaiah? I need Isaiah to come up, please. Isaiah is the strongest boy I've ever met. He carried my bag all the way in for me. Thank you, sir. Do this. Look at that muscle. All right. So I need you 
to see what's in the mystery bag. Could be a monkey, could be a snake. Is it going to bite you? No. no. Here, let's bring out a couple of these things. Uh, we'll leave. I'm sorry. Uh, we'll put this over here. That's only if I get in trouble. <sighs> we'll put this over here. And we need this thing right here. And now we'll just get rid of the bag. Yep. How about you come over here so I don't elbow you in the head every 30 seconds? So, we're going to do a story about the Holy Spirit. What is this? Can you open that for me? Would you like to try some baking soda this morning? I have had kids just grab handfuls of that baking soda and start eating. They think it's the most delicious thing ever somehow. So this baking soda, this is us. This is what we can do without Jesus in our life, without the Holy Spirit within us. And it's the most impractical box ever. It is impossible to open. Sometimes our hearts are impossible to open too until Jesus opens them for us. So I need you to decide how much of that you're going to put in here. You could put the whole thing, you can just put a little, however much you want. Do you want to try to eat some first? No. It's delicious. No? All right, go ahead and put some in there. No, no, in here, in here. As much as you want. Keep pouring. All right, it's empty. Throw the box behind you. There you go, good job. Okay, so now we need to know what this mystery drink is. And I want to show this in the meantime. This is our lives without Jesus. Is this the most amazing object science experiment you've ever seen? No. no. This is really, really bad. Our lives can be are really, really bad without Jesus in them as well. So I need you to take a drink of that. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You don't want to drink vinegar. That's disgusting. Uh, I really doubt your parents want you to drink an entire bottle of vinegar right now. So open that up. And let's just put a little bit of that in here. You're the strongest boy ever. You can open that bottle. Just a little bit of that into the, into the container. Put like a third in. Put like a third of it in there. All right, stop. This is our lives after we have Jesus, after we realize Jesus died on the cross, came to life again, and the, we start building up, and Jesus and the Holy Spirit starts building up within us. But in Assemblies of God churches, we believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is a second endowment, second helping of the Holy Spirit, which helps us to do amazing things for his glory. And so I need you to put a whole lot more in there. Okay. A whole lot more. Good. And stop. And then we start bubbling over and we start doing amazing things for God's glory. It's all because of him that we can come up here and talk with you this morning, that we can go to Africa, that this church exists, and all y'all are in here this morning. It's because of the Holy Spirit. We need to let him be in charge and be in control and do amazing things for him. Oh, thank you so much for your help. All right. Let's do another story, and this time I need your help, kids. So there's going to be pictures up. Pictures up, but when I say pray or I say prayer, I want you guys to stand up and then sit back down, okay? So as you do this, I want you to think about how many times you're standing up and sitting down. And we're going to see if you guys could be praying that many times. All right, this one is Greater Power. This is a BGMC story that was uh, in Togo and uh, presented for understanding some true life things that have happened in Togo. So, next, or first slide, please. Where are we at? Oops, sorry, I didn't find our, our little spot. This lady's name is Yovobi, and this story was brought to you by BGMC Togo. So, who can shout out what B stands for for BGMC? Shout it out. Good. Who here is a boy? Yeah, boys. What does G stand for? Girls. Girls. Who here is a girl? Woo. Yeah. 
The girls are not excited to be here this morning. What does M stand for? Missionary! Who here wants to be a missionary in their school, in their homes, wherever they might be? Shout it out if you want to help Jesus. And what does C stand for? Challenge. Challenge. And this story was brought to you by BGMC Africa, Togo. Yovovi is this lady's name. She woke up and she opened her eyes. Everything remained dark, black like night. Mother, mother, where are you? I, I can't see. Next slide. Yobovi's mother, Iwa, came to Yobovi and helped her to her feet. Mother, help me, mother. I, I'm blind. Next slide. For blindness to come on someone so quickly, Iowa knew it had to be the activity of spirits. Iowa knew all about the activities of spirits, for she was a witch doctor. People would come to her and pay her to cast spells on other people. But something about this frightened Iowa. Why would the spirits do this to her daughter of all people? Next slide. Afraid of the spirits, Iowa knew she had to find a greater power. So she took Yovobi to the house of a, of a Christian pastor. Isn't that amazing? Even witch doctors who have great power, I've met some, they have great power. They have the power of demons and Satan in their lives. They know that there is a greater power, and that power is Jesus. There is no greater power out there than Jesus. He deserves that hand clap. At 4 o'clock, say 4 o'clock, on a Sunday morning, I don't know what you were doing on a, at 4 o'clock this morning, but I was sound asleep, unfortunately, with my 3-year-old kicking me in the back. Yeah. Iowa woke the pastor and said, Please, please pray for my daughter. She was suddenly struck blind. I know that evil spirits have done this, and I know that you have greater power. Next slide. The wife and it, the pastor and his wife prayed for Yabobi for two hours. Say two. Two, two hours. Nothing happened. Finally, they sent Iowa and Yovovi home and said they would come to her after church. Iowa took Yovovi home. She didn't know if the pastor would keep his word or not. Next slide. But later that day, the pastor came. He was not alone. He had brought several people from his church. He told Iowa, these are prayer intercessors. They will pray for Yovovi. All the Christians gathered around Yovobi, and they began to pray. The pastor prayed. I think we're supposed to play popcorn. If you hear pray, jump up. His wife prayed. The intercessors prayed. They prayed for four hours. Then they went home. How many hours did they pray the first time? Two. How many hours did they pray the second time? What is four plus two? Six. Good job. Next slide, please. The next morning, Iowa, at 8 o'clock that evening, Iowa was surprised to see the pastor and the intercessors returning. Again, they prayed for Yobobi. They prayed. They prayed for four more hours. At midnight, they were too tired to continue, so they went home. How many hours did they pray the first time? Two. How many hours did they pray the second time? Four. How many hours did they pray the third time? Four. Four plus four plus two is ten. Good job. Next slide, please. <laughs> the next morning, Iowa took Yobobi to the pastor's house. Look, look, my daughter. My daughter can see. She's healed. Praise God. I, I will then grew quiet. I don't want my daughter to live the kind of life I live. Please pray for her to become a Christian. Next slide. The pastor led Yovovi in a prayer 
and you've all been prayed, and you've all been prayed along with them and gave her heart to Jesus while they prayed. Then the pastor said to Iowa, let me pray. Anybody getting tired? No. God, we're going to do this all day for you as well so that you can become a Christian. Next slide. Iowa allowed the pastor to pray for her, but she did not pray along. She just listened as he prayed. Next slide. Yovovi has grown in the Lord. To this day, she is active in the church. She is praying and learning what it means to walk with the Lord daily. She is also studying to become a seamstress and praying. I'm just adding them now. Next slide. Next slide. So you guys have been so helpful. I need your help one more time. But not just the kids, because your parents can have some fun too, huh? So this is called a scripture picture. And we're going to figure out what Bible verse could this be about. Can we turn to the next slide? You guys, if you know it, let's see if we can say it together. Just together. So the first thing you see, what do you see? So. So the word is so. Say so. Next word. In. Next word. Ice. So in Christ. Good job. Man, we get it over here. What's the next next picture, guys? Without the D, we have what? We. So in Christ, we, though, I'll just read the English. Though, what's that? People, man. What's this? Many. So we, so in Christ, we though many, how many, how many fingers this time? Form one million. How about body? Is that his body? So we form one body. Next line. And you know the sign for and. Oh, who's hungry? Each. We're going to each. <laughs> Eat. <laughs> All right. Okay, this one's a little tricky, guys. we got to get a gardener to tell us. What kind of flower is that? Yes, and if you shorten it, it's a mum. I love that you answered that. That's awesome. <laughs> mum. Mum burr. Burr. We can say member, right? Each member, uh-oh, this letter is what? It's really long. B. Be long. All right? Okay. Each member belongs to? Okay, we need a carpenter. What's that tool? All. The ladies are answering for that. That's awesome. All. The others. others. Good. All right, where are we going to find this in our Bibles? What's at the bottom? He's he row man's Romans 12 5. All right, from the top. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Romans 12, 5. Woo! You guys are awesome. So in Christ, we are one body. This is where I want you guys to really understand it. We work as one body. Missionaries that are here, missionaries far away, we work as one body. And we have one head, and he is Jesus Christ. Next slide. You know the commission? The Great Commission? You guys heard of this one? It says to go, therefore, into all the world and preach the gospel. If you love Jesus, he gave you this commission. 
It is the great commission to go everywhere and preach the gospel and create disciples everywhere. So every single one of us has been challenged by this great commission. So there's a missionary named David Livingston. And one of my favorite quotes, he was saying, no, I don't have that page. Where'd it go? Okay, if a commission, remember this is our great commission, from an earthly king is considered an honor, how can a commission from a heavenly king be considered a sacrifice? So why do we think that when God tells us to do something, like, oh, it's such a sacrifice? When if we had an earthly king tell us to do something, it would be like, oh, I am so honored. I get to do this for my king. Are you challenged? Because I hope so. I hope we have a heart that wants to serve our heavenly king in a bigger way than anything on earth and anybody on earth. And we feel more excited and honored to be able to serve him here and now. Next slide. So we've been sharing with you some of the different wit needs in Africa. We've been sharing with you about missions. We believe that God has a part of that commission for each one of us. And so we shared with you about the power of prayer. We got to see a, some, a girl's eyes were actually open. That was based on a true story. There is no greater power than Jesus Christ. And when we spend time in prayer, we get to see that power show up around the world. So we wanted to challenge you guys with prayer because that is such an important thing. And you don't have to go somewhere. You don't have to move across the world. You can pray every moment, every day, everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So who can tell me what this is? Chocolate. chocolate. Who here likes chocolate? What is this? Probably. Coffee. Who here likes coffee? If you're a parent, you probably woke up to that this morning. So, what do chocolate and coffee have to do with each other? Yeah, mochas are delicious, but that's the wrong answer. They're in Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast sends out more chocolate and more coffee than almost any other place in the world. So when you drink your chocolate, or when you drink your coffee, and when you eat your chocolate, she likes hot chocolate, then pray for missionaries. Pray for us. Pray for those others that you're supporting on that prayer wall. Pray for the local missions happen in this area. Pray. Most important thing that can happen. Another thing you can do for missionaries is to give. And you guys know that, right? Yeah. Did you know that there's two parts to being a missionary? There's the going part of actually being able to go, but then there's also the sending part. And they're equally valuable. And so something you may not know for an Assemblies of God missionary is they have two budgets to raise. Can you say two? Two, two budgets. So one is your cash budget, and that's like your plane ticket. So you can fly and you can move across the world. The second one is your partner budget. And that's the one where you have people giving, and that's, that's the money that goes for your food, that goes for your transportation, that goes for your language learning, that goes to keep you doing missions. Isn't that amazing? So as you are given opportunities and you meet missionaries, pray about it. Say, God, am I supposed to partner with them? Now, this church, I know, loves missionaries because you guys have been partnering with us, and we love that, and we appreciate that. So as you give, you could do it like a personal thing with missionaries and say, I want to partner personally, or you can be giving through your church and, and donating to missions and seeing the value and importance of that and sharing the, great, the gospel, the Great Commission for all over the world. Now, the next one is to actually go. So we told you guys about the huge need for kids ministers in Africa. And if God is pricking on your heart, I am just going to challenge you to ask him what that looks like. Because he will grow your heart. He will change your life in ways that are beyond what you could imagine. There is a website, IWantToBeAMissionary.org, if you are interested in doing missions and worldwide missions. Both of those places you can go and get a feel for what the Assemblies of God is doing all around the world. And we'd love to talk with you more about it at our table. We'd love to share some chocolate so you guys remember to pray for us. Pray for our missionary friends. And um, <laughs> chocolate. And we just want to thank you so, so much, Pastor, for having us. We just have loved our time here.
Well, we can't let them leave without praying over them. Carlin, who is our children's master, <laughs> we're going to have you uh, pray over them. Would you do that for us? Heavenly Father, we come before you and we really lift these wonderful people up. What you put on their hearts, Lord, oh, thank you. We ask, Lord Jesus, anyone that hears today that you have decided that's what you want them to do, let them know. Let them hear your voice. Let them follow you. Because, Lord, that's our job. We know it. To spread the word of you, of what you've done on the cross, and what you can do in our lives, but, oh, our salvation, we thank you for. So, Lord, as these two and, well, five go out for their mission, we ask for protection. Lord Jesus, we ask it for direct and divine guidance, understanding, and blessings. From the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, pour out your blessings upon them, Lord Jesus, your protective arms around them. And, Lord, as people look at them, as they lift you up, Lord Jesus, thank you that you said you will draw all men to them. So for more salvations, we pray. For this wonderful mission, missionaries that are going out now, thank you for the mission and statements and information they've given us. Let it sink deep in our hearts so that at least, even if we're not called to the mission field, if we see a buddy barrel or just in our hearts feel something that we help by pouring into them whatever we, you have asked us to give. So thank you, Lord, and bless them. Continue to bless them and bring more missionaries in. Lord, bring the children, bring the parents, bring the families, and bring the churches in. Thank you, Jesus, in all things. We ask, we pray. Christ's name, amen. Thank you so much. Round of applause. <laughs> we prayed for them, and after seeing how your children all behave, we should pray for our children's minister. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> oh, those poor ladies. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh can you guys handle like a seven and a half minute message or is it too long? You can? All right, all right. You know, I just couldn't. I was planning on not saying anything and I'm like, I just, I just can't. Um, yeah, so just, this isn't the message, but yes, please, please, if you feel led that you can give to them, just drop an envelope in, in our little box. I know we don't talk about our tithes and offering box, but if you'd like to support them, uh, you can do that. Just write missions on it and make sure you uh, see them at, the, at their table. Sound good? Awesome. It's exciting. It's exciting because we have partnered with a lot of new missions or a lot of new missionaries. And so we're going to have them all coming in over the next couple months. And so meeting them and hearing their vision and, and how they're advancing the kingdom of God all over the world. I think it's, it's going to help us. It's going to help us and excite us, right? Because it's exciting times, kind of like the triumphal entry, because it's Palm Sunday. That's what I did there. Uh, that was a segue. Uh, and I forgot the palms out there. In the entryway, those are supposed to be in your hands, uh, so I apologize for that. But at some point, uh, I'm going I'm to tie it in here as we wrap this up. So um, as we move into sort of ending our service and moving towards our worship at the end, we're going to look at the triumphal entry quickly that Jeremiah read for us uh, at the beginning of service and the call to worship. I'm just going to reread a couple verses from Luke chapter 19, uh, verse 37 through 40. And it says, As Jesus was drawing near... Already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and to praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And then when we, when we read uh, Matthew and Mark and John's gospel account, that's where we hear that familiar Hosanna, 
where it says, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And I, and I said this in our prayer at the beginning, but that, that Hosanna, that thing that they were crying out to Jesus, uh, it meant save now, literally, but it, but it isn't like a save now, like I am desperate and hopeless or forlorn. It's this idea of save now with the expectation uh, that he was indeed uh, going to deliver them, that he was going to save. Uh, a, little, a little example uh, maybe too mature for our audience, but they're not listening anyway, so it doesn't matter, would be like if you were a, a POW and, and you see your, the allies coming in to rescue you, they're coming to get you, to liberate you, you would yell from wherever you were in the prison, save now, knowing that they're going to save you. And so there would be that full expectancy. And that's what the people are yelling to Jesus. They recognize that he was the coming king, that he was the long-awaited Messiah. And as they say, Hosanna, save us now, he knew that that is what King Jesus was doing. And he was doing that, even then. Even then, as he marched in Jerusalem, even then, as they cried out, uh, their faith was growing. They were beginning to believe that this was, in fact, Jesus, the Son of God. He was marching. He was just a week away uh, from the cross where he would die for their sins and make a way for salvation to spread across the world. This, indeed, was Jesus saving, saving them then. Um, we know from the story that not everyone believed. You know, the Pharisees did not believe it. In verse 39, they said, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. That is, they're crying out, blessed is he, you know, praise Jesus. And the Pharisees say, no, stop them. Stop them from saying that. Stop them. You know, and we know about the Pharisees, and I won't uh, make this too long, but they, they were plotting to kill him. You know, they had rejected his message. But you can tell from the reading of the scripture that they knew that they couldn't stop the crowd from praising Jesus. They, they didn't have any power at preventing the praise of Jesus until they asked Jesus to tell his disciples to stop. And these disciples could have been charged with blasphemy. They could have been put in prison or worse, uh, just like it happened to missionaries. Uh, but with that aside, the world had, they had no power over them. They did not care because in that moment, the people were so caught up in their faith in the Lord Jesus, right? They, the, the world and sin and Satan and everyone was powerless to prevent their salvation, to prevent their their praise. And, and that's just one thing to take away as, as we leave here, that, that especially in, in the realm of salvation, but in all of our needs, that when we yell out Hosanna with this expectation that God will deliver and hear us, uh, that, that he does indeed. And, and, and the enemy is powerless to prevent that salvation. So maybe you're visiting, maybe you're a child, maybe you need a rededication or something in your life. Uh, but, but, but God's word said, if you cry out Hosanna, if you cry out in faith to the Lord Jesus, the coming king, that he comes in and he does, he does rescue you. The next part of the story, verse 40, uh, Jesus responded to the Pharisees and he says, if, if, if I tell you that if these were to keep quiet, if the disciples were to keep quiet, the very stones would cry out. The very stones themselves. And, and the reason for that is this whole thing had been prophesied in Psalm 118. This whole event had been proclaimed 1,100 years earlier that King Jesus the Messiah would come and that they would praise him and that they would wave the palm branches. And the point is, is like Jesus is going to get his praise. You know, that there was nothing the Pharisees could do. There was nothing that could hinder that. It isn't, the point is, is it isn't hyperbole. That when, when Jesus says, if these people won't praise me, then the rocks are going to cry out, then the rocks are going to cry out. That's what he means. That it was an appointed time for all people, for Jesus to get his praise, and he was going to get his praise that day. And I think just a helpful takeaway is that Jesus isn't like needy, you know, I don't know if that's the right word. He isn't, he isn't like desperate uh, for our praise. The point is that he will get his praise, that he is worthy of praise. Like in Romans uh, 14, 11, it says that every knee will bow and every tongue will conf confess to the glory of God, that God will receive his praise. And, and the point is, is that we have an opportunity, <laughs> an opportunity to give him our praise freely, to give him our worship uh, freely. And it isn't that he needs it. Uh, he is blessed by it. It isn't that he needs it, but, it, but we need it. 
We are a people who need to give our God praise. And it's in those moments, like if you can picture this crowd in their rough lives 2,000 years ago a subsistent living, if you can picture what was going on in their heart when they saw their Messiah and they're jumping up and down and they're praising and they're screaming and they're shouting, this is my king, this is my God, he's going to save me. If you can imagine what that would feel like, that is the opportunity that God gives us when he says, you know, praise me and worship me, that we have this this ability to come before him and to feel his presence and to have our sins forgiven and to feel his cleansing flood upon us that happens when we just you know don't look left and right and don't get caught up in you know who might be looking at me wave this palm branch and i feel silly but just you know just doing it and giving them praise uh that was actually point one this was going to take more than eight minutes i lied it will take seven more minutes five more minutes the second point the second point will come out of verse 41 and it says this it says but as Jesus came closer to Jerusalem and saw the city ahead, he began to weep. And he said, how I wish today that you of all people would understand the way to peace, but now it is too late and peace is hidden from your eyes. And so we have to just add this into everything we've talked about. So there's all of this joy, there's all of this celebration, there's all of this branch waving, and they're taking their cloaks off and putting it in the mud before him. And it says in the midst of this, as Jesus is riding up on this donkey, he begins to weep. He begins to weep because he knew that many didn't understand. He knew that many would not receive him as king. He knew that many did not have faith. And so he wept over them. And, and I read a book once that, that referred to this thing as, as a peculiar majesty, as a strange sort of majesty. And the idea was, is that he is God and he is creator and yet he came to creation. You know, that, that he should be worshipped by all, but he let them abuse him. You know, that he should have just conquered the world, you know, but instead he was led away uh, to slaughter. That in all things when he should have been served, he was in fact can't coming to serve the world. That it was sort of a peculiar majesty. And we see this on this day, that this was his one day on earth. This one day on earth that he was to receive the praise and the honor of people. And it's been 33 years since he had left heaven in all of the worship of the angels. 33 years to get to this next day where he would be honored as he should. And rather than bask in it or rejoice in it, he weeps. He weeps brokenhearted, you know, over the condition of this city and over the condition of these people. And so that's the final takeaway for us uh, in this is that our Christian lives should be one of, of peculiar joy, that we should be a people who are always joyful, like joy unbreakable even in the hard times because we are so loved by God, because our Christ died in our behalf, because he is our father and he is our friend and we are going to glory and we have new life in him. And all of these things are true and so we should, we should radiate hope in this world. You know, we should radiate joy in this dark world. But at the same time, we ought to be a people who are sorrowful, sorrowful like our Lord Jesus, that we rejoice and we're sorrowful because, because there's so many lost. You know, like they're hard for Africa. There's so many lost. There's so many lost at the school here. There's so many lost at the, it, probably at the house over here. There are so many lost. And that is what, what I think our cry when we cry Hosanna. I don't even know if we're singing it, probably not. But you can sing it in your heart. Um, but that's a part of it, is, is you have saved me and I rejoice in that, but I'm still crying Hosanna because I'm not content in just my salvation. I'm not content in what you're doing for me. I want to be a part of you bringing salvation uh, to somebody else. And so that's it. That's the way we're going to end. Um, but just to sort of to tie this illustration and just, just finally is they had the palm branches that, that they laid down, as I said, and as you know, before the Lord Jesus. That, that his, not even his donkey's foot, you know, would touch the mud as he came into Jerusalem. Such was the honor for this king that was coming in. And I think there's a lot to be learned in this. And there's a lot to be, um, I think, experienced in doing things physically. And the, and the first thing that we saw is, is, they, is they waved. 
They waved the palm branches. They weren't ashamed. They weren't uh, concerned about what the Pharisees thought or what their wife or husband thought or what their kids might think. And that's the way that we ought to worship the Christ, the King, who has come into our lives, that there should be real joy and not thinking about tomorrow or my, or my hungry tummy, you know, or, or whatever somebody might think. But, like, my King is here, and he has saved and redeemed me. And I've heard the message from God's Word one last time, and I believe it, and it's true. And so there should be real joy in our worship as we close. And the second thing, and, and you could do this, I think it might be helpful, is, is just lay that, that branch down at some point in your worship. And the idea is, is not only am I willing to lay myself down and my pride down and my ego down in my worship, but I, I'm willing to lay whatever it takes down in the mud to get Jesus, not just to me, but to get Jesus, you know, to someone who doesn't know my Jesus, right? That, that we're disciples and that we're disciple makers and we can't let fear or anxiety or, or whatever the thing is any longer keep us from telling someone about Jesus Christ. He, he came to be the king to save them and all we have to do is lay a little bit of our life down, lay the palm down so that we would be willing to say, can I tell you about my Jesus? Can I tell you about my Jesus? Oh, you went to church, how was it? Oh, let me tell you about it. Like, not just say good, but like, let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you about a passion for Christ. Let me tell you about, you know, missionaries who will take their three kids to Africa when I have a hard time telling the gas station attendant about Jesus. You know, like, let me tell you about what God is able to do in these people's lives. And so that's how we're going to worship. I'm just going to pray. Uh, but let it be both. Let it be joyful, uh, unencumbered in, in our worship, but also this idea of God, use me so that you can come in and break into other people's, people's life. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for today. Father, we thank you that you are here and we thank you that we can celebrate in your presence. Father, we thank you for the word uh, that we heard from the missionaries and we pray your blessing upon them, God, that your kingdom would advance. Father, that you would give them words and a spirit and direction, Father, that, that many, 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 many children and adults would hear and know about your son and that they would be saved. And Father, we pray the same thing here not assuming that just because we are in church that we have received your, your son Jesus. And so we pray, Father, that this would be a day just as that was, that, that, that people would receive your son Jesus, that they would receive uh, the king into their hearts. And we pray, Father, that in our worship that you would motivate and empower and encourage us, Father, that we would be a people who lay it down so that we can bring Jesus Christ and bring his gospel to others. So, Father, we just end this service asking for your spirit to change us. Uh, and we just pray this in the name of your son. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to stand. Come to join the song. Oh, 
upon the praises of a thousand generations. You are worthy, Lord of all. Unto you, the slain and risen King, we lift our voice with heaven, sing you worthy, Lord of all. Highest praises. and dismiss for anyone that needs to go and we're going to sing another song for anyone that wants to stay in worship. Thank you, Lord.